Hello. Yeah. Hi. Okay. Um, so my talk was originally scheduled to be, uh, I think, like the latest updates or something lame. So instead, I went with to infinity and beyond. Um, I am Adam Israelovitz. I used to be a PhD student at Berkeley, but I have since very recently graduated, and now I'm starting to work at Sci-Fi and continuing to do chisel fertile stuff. So to give some background on uh, where chisel came from, so a long time ago, in a laboratory not that far away. Um, let's see if this auto plays. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, <laughs> so, dun, 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 dun. so, so designing hardware was becoming more and more difficult. The end in art scaling and Moore's law coming to an end to a close, throughout the hardware industry, everyone was desperately looking for ways to improve designer productivity to meet the ever-growing demand for computation. Meanwhile, in a small lab in Berkeley, a solution was already brewing, and that solution was hardware generators, or another way to think about it is type-safe metaprogramming for RTL. The idea was that instead of writing multiple RTL instances that all look similar, instead you write one generator that is parameterized and you can generate multiple um, instances from this one generator. And if you do this, you get a lot more design reuse because you express something once, but it can generate uh, multiple different instances, so you can reuse that generator in more contexts. You get type safety because you, you wrote your generator in a more powerful programming language, which has type safety. And because you're using a modern programming language, you get all your modern programming powerful language features. Um, so yeah, I mean, tail recursion is its own reward. We should all know that. <laughs> okay. So um, if you're new to Chisel and you want to sort of know, well, what is it about? Um, the original design of Chisel was we wanted to um, be able to write our design without any loss of expressibility. What that means is we want to be able to write Verilog-like Chisel so that we can control every mux in the design, we can control every bit width if we wanted to. Not that we have to, but if we wanted to, we can do those, type, those types of optimizations. So as an example, this is a chisel module. It computes a moving average. So what it does is it's sort of a, uh, the structure is similar to an FIR filter where we have some input here. I guess I don't have a laser, but I can point. Um, we have some, some input and we're registering it over a few cycles. And then we're doing some computation where basically we're, we're weighting them all equally and we're adding them together to get sort of the moving output, or the moving average. So this is our instance, and we can control everything, but now I have a few questions. So the first is, well, what if we wanted more than three points? We want a moving average of four, or five, or you know, maybe that would be a good parameter. Second thing is, what about weighted averages? Well, what if I wanted these numbers to be different? So what I really want is a generic FIR filter, not this specific instance of an FIR filter. So um, this is how you can start to see things that look more like software like Chisel, okay, where we now add this additional layer of parameterization on top of our instance. So here I have this generic FIR filter. I'm still parameterizing by the bit width, sort of a simple parameter, but I'm passing in a sequence of coefficients for what that FIR filter is doing. And then I can programmatically iterate over these coefficients and construct all the registers to do the delaying I can, I can programmatically iterate over it to tabulate them together and compute all the products, and then I can reduce and sum them all together. So with this, I have this metaprogramming enables this powerful amount of parameterization. And if we think back to that moving average three filter, well, I can call this, FI, this generic FIR filter and pass in the sequence of constants. But more importantly, I can use it in lots of other places too. I can create a delay filter, I can create a triangle filter, all with the same code. So this is how you get, this is the, uh, the power that Chisel enables, is to write these generators, these generic generators that in, capture design patterns. So we worked on Chisel um, and we got pretty far, but we realized that improving just that one aspect of RTL design doesn't really help when, well, it doesn't, it's not the same thing as solving the entire hardware design loop. So 
This is um, our, our L RTL design, and we feel like Chisel really helps with that aspect of it. But there's the whole ecosystem that we have to tackle. Um, so there's how do we verify these designs, how do we do physical design, um, you know, all the way through the whole life cycle of the product, and we want to iterate over this. So we, we need a more agile design approach, which means we need to try and start tackling these other aspects of the loop. So one thing that sort of affects this uh, design loop is um, I have my, say, my chip, my chip RTL, but I'm trying to, let's say, emulate it on, on an FPGA so I can get some, um, I can get long running programs and analyze their performance, but I also want to tape out that same RTL. Well, if anyone here has any experience with that, those are actually going to be different RTL because for any, uh, you know, tech, uh, transistor technology, they have custom SRAMs, they have different clock gates, they have uh, all these specialized things which affect, which basically push changes back up into this chip RTL. So it's, it is hard to express a generator that works on all different sort of underlying platforms because you end up this, with this explosion of parameters at the top. So um, we realize that, that actually software has the same problem too. So if you think about it, um, software has this, uh, you know, this generic sort of platform independent um, project that it can run on lots of different platforms and get specialized on the way down. So the realization is that, oh, okay, there's this compiler layer here that lets us do this specialization for these underlying platforms. Um, built upon that is a powerful language. Built upon that is a, a set of libraries and then pro, um, projects. And so what we really realized is, okay, we, we sort of got this top half with Chisel. Um, we have the projects and we had this library layer, which we see as like lots of different generators, but we had this monolithic Chisel. So what we really wanted is actually to sort of define a language and implement it with a front end and then have a compiler stack. And this would enable us to do more and more RTL transformations. So that's where Fertile came in. It's an extendable hardware compiler framework. Um, it is an intermediate representation um, in the form of an AST. And it has a readable concrete syntax. And if you want to understand more about it, you can go to that link and, and read the latest of Fertile. So how does Fertile work? Um, basically, it's got, um, it has a structure of lots of different transformations, and in it you pass your circuit, as well as metadata and annotations, a single transform occurs, and then you get the output of a changed AST and maybe changed metadata. And this uh, continues in this sort of pipeline fashion. So because it's expressed in this way, it's pretty straightforward to add a custom transform for your, your company or your product. Um, so uh, because sort of all of the state of your circuit as it's undergoing transformations is visible with a readable concrete syntax. Um, the other thing that we've been working really hard on is making this metadata propagate in a dependable and um, customizable way. So if you're interested in how we do that, that's also something you can talk to me later about. So that's basically the, um, up till now, what the uh, history of Chisel and Fertile is, why we made some of those design decisions. Um, and now I'm going to go into the, I guess, the latest and greatest section. So we have new websites. So um, I think, and you know, I see we were advertising this here. Um, a few things I want to point out is we do publish the Chisel 3 API Scala doc. So if you want to know, okay, well, what, is, what do all of the functions in Chisel mean? We've, we have published API documentation, and you can click there and, and view it. We also have a new community tab. So um, if you're a Chisel user and want to stay connected, here are some links and other, other things. Uh, we have a new home in Chips Alliance that Z was talking about, which is really great. It gives uh, Chisel a home, which is now um, independent of just UC Berkeley, but it's a place where it can continue to grow and diversify its support, and diversify its development, and, uh, and continue being um, addressing the, I guess, ongoing uh, uh, landscape of, of uh, design methodology. 
So uh, this, whole this whole event was organized through Chips Line, so I want to make a big shout out to Ted. Thank you so much for doing basically all of it. Um, there is a change where we're moving to Apache 2.0 that uh, Z mentioned, and there's been a whole, you know, w when you get lawyers involved, it gets difficult, but it's going to happen, um, and we've sort of cleared the way, so uh, expect to see that soon. I do want to highlight that Chisel and Fertile has made a very, um, uh, I guess, um, intentional effort to improve its release processes so that when we do a new release, we don't break backwards compatibility, that you can bump sort of safely, and you can, we want Chisel to be a stable thing that companies and can rely on. So what we've been doing is we have, uh, this is sort of a commit, uh, tree, and what we do is when we, when we make a PR and we propose a change to Chisel or Fertile, we categorize it as sort of a minor change, which means that it doesn't uh, change any APIs, it's only a bug fix, or it only adds um, uh, APIs, and we, um, or it's a major change, as in it breaks some APIs, so it forces the user to change their code. So this is sort of the master branch as we're pushing all of our development things. But then when, when we ever get these minor things, we automatically backport them to the earlier release that doesn't have the major breaking changes. So if you're on Chisel 3.2.5 and you bump to 3.2.6, you're only going to get minor, minor updates, which means that you don't have to change your source code and it thinks you, should just, you should just get new features. So we've been able to much more easily bump rocket chip in other repositories on this and get sort of the, the latest best things without waiting until we do sort of a, a refactor on the major version. So we have a growing healthy community that I really want to highlight here. Over the past seven months, we have 300 merged PRs from a variety of people over a variety of different uh, chisel related or like core chisel repositories. We have an active Gitter channel, so if you need your questions answered um, on a more uh, immediate, I guess, place, uh, that's a good place to ask. We are really um, focusing on Stack Overflow as a place to ask your questions and a place to answer questions because it really helps with the one-to-many problem. And we have almost 1,000 Twitter followers, so if you're not already, follow Chisel Lang on Twitter. I want to point out some things to help new users navigate the Chisel ecosystem. So like you're just coming in, you want to learn, what can you do? So the, the thing we almost always point people to is the, is the Chisel Bootcamp, and you can learn Chisel in the browser without having to install anything. You just click that link and it takes you to a sort of a unique um, uh, instance in the cloud and you can, there's interactive um, like Scala windows that you can, uh, read about, read documentation, and then write, experiment with small amounts of, of chisel code. The one problem with this is it doesn't save your work. So if you want to sort of come back to it, then you need to run it locally, which is also possible, and you can you know, re read the installation instructions there. Um, we've been working on a new tester, so we really want to encourage writing unit tests. So if you're interested, you should definitely check out ch um, chisel tests. We have, a, we have Treadle, which is a chisel fertile execution engine, and it has a REPL, so you can actually poke and peek things dynamically and interact with your circuit. And so if you, if you enjoy learning that way or um, debugging that way, you should definitely check it out. And finally, if you want to start your own chisel project, there's a chisel project template that you should clone and start. It sets up all the directories in the right way um, so that things just work from the get-go. So this is an older slide, but I love it, so I'm just I'm going to do it. Um, so I, we have this continuing emphasis on clarity. We want to make the language easy to use, and that's hard because people, when they come in, they often don't know Scala, they don't know Chisel, and so it's all sort of confusing. Um, and I think we made a few mistakes in Chisel 2 that we are now fixed in Chisel 3, so I just want to highlight one of these. So here we have a reg, and then we pass in uint and then 3. So my question is, what does this mean in Chisel 2? Okay, so I have, three, I have three options for you. So the first one is it's a register of type uint, unsigned integer, with a width of three. That seems reasonable. So hopefully it's not too early. Everyone can think. 
You guys hit your copy? Okay, because there's another one coming. So it could be a register whose next cycle's value is three. Okay, so it could be that this, the, the parentheses here indicate that it's passing in a literal three, and it's just always registering that three. It could be a register whose initial value is three. Okay, so this is, okay, everyone got your copy, so I'm gonna do voting. So raise your hand if you think it's number one. Okay, so maybe like half the people. Number two, one, number three. A lot of people, okay, so you can see how it's sort of confusing. Okay, well, in reality, I tricked you. You're all wrong. <laughs> this is the actual answer. It's a register with no initial value and a width of two. <laughs> okay, so, so why, how on earth does this happen? So what, 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 what we were doing in Chisel 2 was this is a constructor of a register, and it, would, it was expecting a type here. Okay, but uint3 is our way of declaring a, a literal three. With, and, a, and so what it used to do is it would look at the type of that thing and take it. And so if you declared it a literal with a value three has a width of two. So that's how we would get that, which is super confusing to new users. So I wanna tell you that chisel three, is way, chisel three is way better in this regard. We have different, we've thought about this problem and this is why you may see these like dot w's and dot u's but it's to clarify these types of things to make it easier for when you're just looking at code to see what it means. Okay, so um, we do all of our development on GitHub, um, and GitHub has been really amping up their game on improving different project management things and making it really easy to discuss different features, do code reviews, um, add, add continuous integration, et cetera. So we, we highly recommend, if you're interested, to start in GitHub. We also have weekly Chisel development meetings, um, which are on Mondays. So if you're interested in calling in and just learning or contributing, contact me and we'll definitely get you included. Okay, I wanted to highlight some just ongoing work that's out there that's developing Chisel projects. Um, so a lot of this is, is Berkeley focused, but what we have here is DSP Tools, which is a library of Chisel 3 tools for DSP process, processing. Um, Tripyard, you'll, there's a talk on that tomorrow, which if you're interested, you should definitely attend. It's basically trying to aggregate lots of these different repositories and, and make, um, write a lot of documentation for them and have sort of a single SOC design methodology that you can look at and understand how the whole system works. Um, we have Gemini, which is a systolic array generator. We, we're working on a Chisel GUI, which is cool. It's, a, um, it's like a waveform viewer. FireSim, um, maybe you guys have heard of it, but it's a easy to use scalable FPGA accelerated. It's related to Chipyard. Um, and yeah, so Boom is still actively being developed on. Barstools is a collection of uh, fertile transformations. Rocket Chip is a, you know, uh, Rocket Chip and diagrammer actually is cool. It enables you to generate dot visualizations of your circuit, of how, of how like registers and wires and how they all connect. So now you may be thinking, oh man, this is so Berkeley focused. Like what about my project? Glad you asked. Let us promote your project. So we have on, on that community tab, we are starting to collect lots of different Chisel repositories and projects. So if you don't see yours up there, send us an email on, or, you know, on Chisel users and we'll add you to the website so we can help promote you. The other thing that we're um, starting up is IP contributions. And the idea is that if you want us to host your project or, or link to it on here, we'll build it against our releases to make sure that it doesn't break. And if we do, then we'll notify you that something will break in the future and you can fix it. So trying to figure out, well, what has been the academic impact of Chisel? So it now has 427 citations, uh, which is pretty great, the original 2012 DAC paper. Um, and CCC 2020 is really diverse and growing. So this is sort of a breakdown of the attendees. We have a current headcount of, of 83 people and over 30 unique companies are represented. So it's actually really cool. Um, and over two thirds of our attendees are from industry. We have some unknowns. So, who are you? All right. Um, okay, so now we're gonna get to some new features. Um, the first is what we call a stage phase refactor. 
Let's see it. And how am I doing on time? Because I don't see it. Five minutes? Okay, great. Let me just pull out my phone. Okay. Um, so, as I showed you before about Fertile, it has all these transformations, and you're sort of passing data between these transformations that you can expect. We're bringing that type of modularity in design to the whole chisel, chisel ecosystem. So the idea is we have a custom, or we have a chisel phase where it passes in metadata and annotations. Things of this might include like uh, which chisel design to instantiate and other command line arguments get converted to this metadata annotations and passed into a phase. And then the output of the chisel phase includes like your elaborated chisel design. Um, and then you can add you know, a custom phase in the middle. So if you want to inspect things, generate additional design collateral or verification collateral, whatever, you can add your custom phase in, the, in, the whole com in this sort of whole compiler flow. And then eventually things get passed to Fertile where it gets converted to the AST and then you know, all, all the normal Fertile stuff happens. So in this sort of realm, we've been working on what we call chisel aspects, which is one of these phases, but we sort of define better the interface so it's not just generic data to generic data. Um, and the idea is that you can do better programmatic generation of design collateral. So say verification, they want to know every single interface of a certain type in your design. Well, you can write a, a, a certain phase that inspects the um, generated chisel design and iterates over it and finds all of those interfaces and dumps them out to a file so verification knows exactly which interfaces they need to attach their uh, checkers and monitors and stuff to. So um, I'm going to have a demo of that tomorrow. So if you're interested, come check that out. We also have a dependency API where it enables you to inject custom transforms. So as opposed to, so, so as opposed to the previous slide, um, you sort of would have to change at the top level what all of these sequence of things were. What I really want to do is have you run the generic chisel compiler, but on the side say, add my custom face, which means you can use sort of the chisel main, but add all your own stuff and have it in get injected at the right place. So we have as a dependency API, so it lets you define prerequisites of different phases and dependence on other phases so that it can automatically get scheduled. So uh, in terms of actual chisel updates, um, we have We've added the interval type. So this um, you could use for DSP type um, sort of uh, data flow circuits where it can do more um, aggressive bit width optimizations because it knows the intervals that all of the operators can do instead of just the bit widths, which are more conservative. We have native asynchronous reset support, which is supported directly in Fertile. So that's been a long time ask, and I'm happy to say that that is now added. Um, and we've been really working on a Verilog emission improvement. So um, we inline bit abstraction operators and we've reduced unnecessary signed casting. And there's the whole, uh, whole host of other things that we're going to be checking off our um, to-do list. So some future directions. I wanted to highlight sort of our current development priorities. And these are things that um, we think are important, but as we want to listen to it from the community as well. So if you think there's something that you really, really think is important, um, you know, you can advocate for that and, and uh, change our priority list. So we want to improve integration with existing hardware methodologies. We realize that, you know, chisel isn't going to boil the world or boil the ocean, not the world. <coughs> uh, well, we'll see. Um, but so we need to integrate with uh, other existing hardware methodologies. So the best way to do that is have the, Ver the Verilog as sort of a handoff and because the Verilog emission is just very uh, verbose, it's not a good um, handoff material. So we want to really improve the quality of the Verilog emission, as well as improve naming stability of signals and modules. Because it's a generator, if you make one small change in the generation, it may trigger how, I guess, Chisel computes name collisions. And you can have like a very small change, have a massive change in, the, in what signal names Got, got mapped to. So we want to fix that problem. We want to improve compilation speeds for large, large designs. So it's getting to the point where if you are um, using a really large design, then it can make it um, harder to do iterative work because you're waiting all the time for a chisel to compile. So we're thinking about doing fertile incremental compilation, 
paralyze and improve the chisel compilation speed and do more performance debugging of just the compiler, because I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit there. We want to improve the user experience. Um, I'm, in my talk tomorrow, I'm going to be using IntelliJ exclusively so you can get a feel for what it's like to use IntelliJ with Scala and with Chisel. It is great. It really helps a lot. Like, it's really good. So go download the Community Edition. Uh, it's free. You can use it. it. The Scala community has been investing in their sort of IDE support, and so it's, got, it's gotten a lot better. Um, we also want to encourage unit testing. So we have just core improvements to Chisel. We want to improve the vector literals. We're thinking about a strict mode for mismatched width, um, mismatched width assignments. And we're going to prepare for the next generation of Scala so that we, you know, Scala is moving as well. So we want to make sure that Chisel is ready for that. Um, and I, as I sort of mentioned, we've made the framework more extendable and we want to add more documentation for how to do that. So what is Chisel's trajectory? I've said it's infinity and beyond. Uh, I'm not sure. This is the current GitHub stars uh, over time, and it's been really taken off. So um, if you try to figure out what that trajectory is, it's pretty good. Um, I, I like to look for more signs in the world as opposed to quantitative data. So it turns out there's this uh, 1995 ACID electronic record whose A side is called Chisel and whose B side is Trajectory Infinite. So, I mean, <laughs> coincidence? I don't know. Okay, well, maybe you're excited, you're intrigued, maybe you're skeptical. I don't care. We want you. So, um, if you're, I'm really happy to, you know, that this uh, community conference is happening. I'm really excited to just talk, talk to everyone who's using Chisel, hear your stories, and yeah, let's keep on moving. So, thank you.